Okay kids, it's time for books. So cuddle up to mum or dad and let's rock and read. Today, I'll be reading you The Boy Who Made Things Up. And this is how it goes. There was once a dad who had a little boy. It was a bit of a waste for this dad to have a boy because he was much too interested in work. He worked all the week and then at the weekends he worked some more. He did not have much time to spend with, this little, with his little boy. This was not much fun. With no dad to tell him exciting stories, the boy had to make up his own stories. One day, the dad's car broke down a long way from home and had to be taken to a garage. He decided to make the best of it and take his boy for a walk. Come on, Michael, he called. We'll wander down to the road, shall we? Michael was delighted to go for a walk with his dad. He marched cheerfully on, along beside him. After a while, he said, Shall we just walk along, Dad? Or shall we make some of it up? Make some of it up, said the puzzled dad. Oh well, whatever you like, Michael. Shall we go by that path then, said the little boy, pointing over the field. Sorry, pointing. Over the field ran a path that dad did not recognise. It was narrow and a bit tangled with bright stones poking through the ground. That's funny, said the dad. I've never seen that path before. Where does it go? It goes to the sea, said Michael, leading the way. But the sea is so far away, cried the dad. I, it can't lead to the sea. We're making it up, remember, said Michael. The sea is on the other side of that little hill. Michael went on. A soft murmuring filled the air as if giants were breathing quietly in their sleep. The dad and Michael hurried up the little hill. There on the other side was the sea. The sand stretched a long way, starred with shells and seaweed. There was no one else on the long sunny shore. There weren't even any seagulls, just the sand with the sea dancing along its edge. Somebody sleeping. I told you, I told you, yelled Michael and charged onto the beach. If I'd known we were coming here, his dad said, trying hard to make his voice sound ordinary, I'd have bought buckets and spades. There are buckets and spades over by that log, Michael told him, and our swimming trunks. Mine are wrapped in a blue towel. What about yours? Uh, said his dad. Just make it up, Michael cried. I'll make it up for you. A red towel, almost new. The log, log lay half in, half out of the sand, as if, as if it was trying to burrow down and get away from the sun. Swim first, decided Michael. It's a bit cold. Let's make it a warm day. Immediately, the sunshine grew hotter. The dad stood fanning at his towel. I'm ready, Michael said, dancing before him. You're so, Dad. Last one in is nothing but a sand flea. He sped, running and jumping into the waves. The sand flea Dad followed. Be careful, he shouted. I haven't done much swimming for a few years. Hey, you're a 
wonderful swimmer, said Michael. So, we can both swim to the islands. The islands, said the dad. Sure enough, out on the horizon were islands scattered like seeds. The boy and his dad swam out to the islands without feeling tired. The water was warm yet tingling and as clear as green glass. Bright fish as small and shiny as needles followed them and tickled their feet. Down, down, down under the water. The sand shone silver. The boy and his dad swam in and out among the islands. Waves burst out on the rocks around them and rainbows in the spray curled over their heads. Sometimes they swam on the fronts, peering down through the clear water, watching fish and sand. I could swim all day, the dad cried. But we've got to get back to our ice creams, declared Michael. So they swam back to the empty beach, still quiet except for the sighing, breathy, breathing sea. Where will we get ice creams, asked the dad. There are no shops. Can't you understand how things work yet? Michael cried despairingly. We make something up. Look! Far down the beach, someone was moving closer and closer. It was a tall, thin man dressed in black and white squares. He was holding a blue frilly sunshade over his head with one hand and carrying a basket in the other. into Michael's hands. Then he turned his bicycle and rode straight into the sea. For a few minutes his blue sunshade bobbed above the water and then a green wave cowered slowly over it like a curtain coming down at a theatre. The basket was full of ice cream with nuts in it and strawberries on top. The dad looked very thoughtful. eating the ice cream. They played with their bus buckets and spades for a while and then they decided it was time to go. All the way home the dad looked more and more thoughtful and grown up. Every time he looked at Michael he blinked. As soon as they got home, Michael was sent to wash his hands. His dad, his dad stood beside his mum, drying up the dis dishes she was washing. Tell me, my dear, he said in a quiet, nervous voice. Does Michael often make things up? Oh, yes, said his mum. He's always making up so much. He's very good at it. But, said the dad in a very astonished voice, he took me to the beach. We went swimming. I got sunburnt. My shoes are full of sand. And yet, I know the sun is very far away. Oh yes, said the mum. I tried to tell you before, but you're too busy working. It's very strange, very strange, said the dad. But lots of fun, the mum added. Yes, I suppose it is. Uh, yes, I suppose it is, said the dad. He thought some more. I don't think I'll spend so much time working from now on. Our dad and son should see a lot of each other, don't you think? He asked. Oh, yes, I'm sure they should, said the mum. And she smiled. A smile that was almost a grin at the saucer she was washing. joining me to read The Boy Who Made Things Up. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Oh, and remember, remind mum and dad to subscribe so you can see all my books.
Bye.